welcome to uh, Yapsi about modern Perl. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about modernness. <laughs> uh, the problem with uh, the modern conveniences is that they are unevenly distributed, of course, since they come from the future. But uh, right now we're in the present, we're in Riga, and my wife and I are really charmed by uh, this town. There's just all sorts of uh, lovely things. Uh, we had really good timing. Most of you guys were wandering out in the rainstorms yesterday and the day before. Uh, we, we just managed to get hit good weather, so. Um, there's just a lovely mix of uh, good and old. By the way, I took all these pictures uh, in the last couple days, so nothing from off the, the net here. Uh, this is the, the, a picture of the train station, uh, but there's, there's this lovely mixture of the modern and the, the old, as there are in, in many European cities. Uh, lovely canal. How many of you walked by the canal? Yeah, it's beautiful. Lovely reflections. Uh, attack ducks. Um, especially if you have any kind of bread. Um, but we can attack the ducks too. This was, uh, this was my dinner last night. Um, lovely creation. I'm not sure what style it is, but it's, it's lovely. Uh, lovely mix of, uh, this is the, the, the view from, from my duck dinner last night. This is the, the little garden, and this is a parking lot. Uh, but it's a sort of a formal postmodern garden or something. They, they love their flowers here. There's flowers all over. Uh, the, the flowers are lovely, the manhole covers are lovely. Um, the trees are lovely, especially when you're looking at the, uh, the uh, uh, Russian Orthodox uh, church there. Or other churches. They love their trees. Sometimes they, they sort of line them up oddly, but uh, that's not the only odd thing, though. Um, no, no, I'm not talking about my, my wife here. Um, but uh, you know, obviously they made some sort of a, a nice minimalistic spigot here, and then somebody said, well, we've got to put this grill work over to protect it. It's, very odd. Uh, there are a lot of a uh, lot of dead white males that have lived here. Apparently, <laughs> um, this guy uh, about the, in the Napoleonic era, more modern. Uh, lots of heroes. This guy is in uh, literature. Uh, this guy collected folk t uh, folk songs. Uh, this guy um, he died a long time ago. Um, uh, he's killed uh, the dragon many times. This is Saint George. Um, but I don't actually think he lived here. Uh, he's kind of bored. He's, 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 uh, he's killed the dragon so many times. <laughs> uh, they're not all uh, dead white males, though. Um, here are some um, rather lively, um, very not males. Um, and they're not white, they're kind of bronze. Uh, we have all the modern you know, languages here. They've got a place to get Java. Uh, but we're here to talk about modern Perl. Now, you know, modern kind of means more than one thing. It, it usually just, in, in the normal sense, it just means contemporary. Uh, it, it mostly means that. Uh, but there's also the idea of modernism, which is not postmodernism. And we'll, we'll get into that. I've talked about postmodernism in the past, and a little bit about modernism. But, um, you know, I came through. Uh, I, I uh, learned by my periods of history through, through music. So there was the Baroque period and there's the classical period, really neoclassical, but in music, they didn't know how the Greece did music, so it wasn't just classical. Uh, Romantic, uh, and of course the modern period, and the, the postmodern period. These are all vast oversimplifications, but um, there, there are different ways of, of balancing off how you deal with simplicity and complexity. It's, it's how you think of things that just don't quite fit into your brain. Um, life, real life is really complicated. So, but there's many different ways for things not to fit into your brain. Um, <coughs> for instance, there's, there's architecture. Nobody can understand all of architecture or literature. And nobody can really understand all of music. You just can't even understand all of 20th century music. Uh, or art. <laughs> I, 
maybe nobody can understand any of art. But um, actually, you know, I, I, have, I have some background in, in most of these. Um, I have two daughters who are artists, uh, so I've heard a lot about art. Um, I personally have a lot of uh, experience with, with music. Uh, and um, uh, I can talk about literature because my wife has read a lot of books. <laughs> um, and I can talk about architecture because I've seen a few buildings, especially here in Riga. Now, uh, Latvians are kind of conflicted about you know, their, their time periods. Uh, that's because Riga has a, an awful lot of history. You can just tell by looking at the walls. Um, I don't mean me and my wife. Um, you know, there's just this, this sense of, of many layers of history plastered over. Uh, you know, th this old brick wall here, that would, that would uh, you know, to somebody who was a, who was a, uh, a romantic painter, they would paint that wall lovingly. Um, and probably did, in fact. Uh, but we're, you know, we're here in the, we're here in the Baltics, and, you know, we, we like to joke about world domination. Here it's no joke. <laughs> um, you know, this guy, he, uh, he's a hero here, kind of, because he helped fight off Napoleon. Uh, so he was in the time of Napoleon. But people keep, like, marching through here for some reason. Um, now here, here are some, here's the, uh, the three uh, riflemen out there in the, in the square, and then they, they came back, and you know they're they're kind of conflicted about that because some of them, uh, you know, continued to working with the, the the Russians and some of them with the Latvians, so they, they they were not clear how to think about that. Some people are clear how to think about some things. Uh, this uh, dead white male is uh, very beloved, as you can tell by all the flowers there. Uh, he turns out to have been the first um, modern prime minister um, and kind of the last modern prime minister of Latvia until uh, uh, recently. Uh, this was uh, 70 years ago, fairly recent history. Uh, but even 50 years ago, think about it, we could not have had this conference here. Um, well, for one reason, I'd have only been six. Uh, and when I was six, I was not a language designer. Uh, I was still kind of learning it. Uh, I was actually a space nut back then. I got up early to watch all the Mercury launches, and you know I knew very well that the, uh, the astronauts were the good guys and the cosmonauts were the bad guys. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, other people felt the other way around about that. Um, but um, nowadays, it's not so clear who's the good guys and the bad guys. We're all sort of in it together, and that's, that's a good thing. Uh, 24 years ago, even, I could not have come here. Um, that's when Pearl was invented. I was working on a secret project. I had a secret clearance. I would not have been allowed to come to this country. Uh, but, you know, the Cold War was better than the Hot War. Well, sometimes. Um, you know, even 20 years ago here, um, my wife and I were walking down the canal here, and on the other side is a lovely little hill. And uh, you know, there used to be a castle there, and of course, it, it got knocked down some time in history or other. And so they, they built this uh, little park here. Here's the view from the top of the hill. This this park is kind of built out of the rubble from the the, the castle. And you know, they planted a nice garden here, and and uh, you can tell that they they wanted a pony. You can see the pony there. Lower, here, I'll give you a close-up. It looks like that. Okay. So, they wanted a pony. Um, and this is also in view of uh, Milda, the, uh, the Freedom Statue. Um, but uh, there's actually a memorial down here to uh, several people who were uh, killed 20 years ago in the, uh, because they got a little too close to the uh, action. Uh, when uh, all the action was happening. Uh, so there's a very near sense of history here, too. Um, here's a path up that hill. Um, it, it's interesting stones, but I, I put it in here to remind us that the history repeats itself. Um, well, enough about history. Uh, I wanted to talk about architecture. 
And specifically, let's talk about good and bad architecture um, and ugly architecture. Those of you who have been over near the, the uh, Convent of Seta uh, have seen this gate. Uh, some of it's kind of spooky architecture, especially when backlit. Uh, modern architecture, here's a lovely view of uh, this tower. Um, but, uh, you know, this, is, this says something about the modern period. There's some really beautiful things, and then there's all these ugly wires. And sometimes the modern architects just sort of built things ugly on purpose. They kind of thought ugly was beautiful. Reminds me of Python. Um, except that's that. Except Python is about white space. This is black space. Um, uh, you know, and even our venue here is sort of a yeah kind of uh, uh, architecture. Okay, more examples of uh, of uh, modern architecture. The uh, Skyscraper on the left is really ugly, modern, just a box, basically. The one on the right is fairly attractive, more postmodern building. And we have we have buildings that are in the middle. This is sort of it's a post it, it's a modern box, but it's starting to get a little color on it. So it's starting to go a little postmodern there. That's cool. We've got um, uh, you know postmodern buildings like bilateral symmetry, and they, they imitate older buildings. Uh, the town itself, because it has all this history, is just a, a melting pot of all different styles, which is sort of a postmodern thing in itself. Um, looking at the other direction, all these lovely colors. Um, and uh, so you go around the corner from this, and the, uh, the uh, apartment there is painted all different colors to make it look like all those buildings. So that's sort of a postmodern idea. But the, this, this town is, is really lovely. Uh, there, there's all sorts of uh, modern things, postmodern things, uh, relatively ancient things. Um, the, the, the cool chick in the foreground is not old. <laughs> and here's the town hall. It looks sort of neoclassical. But if you look at it from the end, you realize there's this, this sort of modernist uh, Carillion roof on the top. So combining these ideas is a postmodern idea. The hotel we're staying in. It's uh, you know kind of a uh, mid uh, mid romantic kind of uh, subdued uh, trying to be classical, uh, but across the way from us is a neoclassical building that's really not well done. It's a bad <laughs> design. I mean, why is there a door halfway up the wall there? I don't get it. But romantic can be done poorly too. Or it can be done well. Here's some, some nice, uh, a nice Victorian library, lovely brickwork. Here's sort of a, an okay neoclassical. At least it's well, well kept up. Um, but, uh, you know, they still have to put a fountain in front of it to make it look pretty. Here's a very old classical building. It, it's uh, kind of dingy and uh, not well kept. Uh, they're working on it. But, uh, you know, Last year we were in Pisa and they have their leaning tower. This is um, sort of the same idea, I guess. But enough about architecture. Uh, I actually study these periods mostly via music, and specifically violin. Um, and uh, when I was young, I was taught that the, you know, there were four periods of music, at least with respect to the violin. Um, we have the, uh, the Baroque, classical, the romantic, and the modern, uh, in that order. And uh, then, you know, what, what's this like postmodern thing that's happening? Uh, that actually came about while I was uh, studying violin. Uh, so what we can, we can re reverse this. If we turn it upside down, we, we get a stratigraphic view. So the things on the top are built on top of the things below, you know, the rubble of the, the past. Of course, good postmoderns, we have to not capitalize on anything. That, that would be bad. Um, but, uh, you know, the postmodern kind of uh, supposedly embraces all the previous periods. Well, kind of, sort of. Um, there's a, a prefix operator in, uh, in uh, postmodernism. It's, it's called the neo-operator. 
So uh, postmodern can, can deal with neo-modern, neo-romantic, neo-classical, and neo, neo uh, It's sort of like this picture here. You see the wires. There's four chunks of wires going in, and they all become one chunk of wires on the right. So these four periods all sort of become postmodernism, in a sense. Now, Perl, I said in the past, is a postmodern language. Uh, I've claimed it was the first postmodern language. Of course, I've claimed a lot of things that are dubious truths, but, um, but hey, that's because I'm postmodern. Uh, now, we, we say that postmodern embraces all previous periods, uh, well, except the modern, um, because the reaction against the modern. So, uh, when we put up this, this picture here, we really have to sort of say it's, it's the, not the neo-modern period, it's the neo-mumble period. And we, in Perl, we're, we're much more romantic, uh, micro-romantically oriented, so we sort of, you know, not, not going to have the, uh, much classical in there either. And we might as well get rid of all of them. Um, but, um, anyway, Perl is a postmodern language that doesn't embrace the modern well yet. <laughs> but, postmodernism can embrace the modern occasionally, in a neo sort of way. And that's what modern Perl is all about. That's why you're here. Well, it, it, you know, it's really about cool new stuff, right? Um, but, you know, when, when is it okay to, to get the cool new stuff? We have people from here who are thinking about upgrading to 5.8. <laughs> we have people who are thinking about upgrading to 5.14. We have people who are thinking about upgrading to 6.0. Um, well, when is it okay to adopt new things? Um, well, I'm a romantic. Most of you are romantics. Well, obviously, if you were modern, you'd love Python. You wouldn't be here. You'd be at a PyCon. And you'd hate Perl. And, but since you're romantics, you don't hate Perl. You love hate Perl. I know this emotionally. Uh, I love Unicode, and I hate it. Uh, but it's useful. Uh, this love-hate relationship idea, where, where does that come from? Um, well, it started back in, in the year, you know, when we announced the, the Pearl 6 effort in the year 2000. And it turned out it was kind of a love-hate fest. Um, but it started out emotionally. Most of you know the story about how uh, John Orwant threw mugs across the room and said, we've got to do something dramatic. Uh, because, you know, there was already some realization that, that uh, that in some areas Pearl was stagnating. So, you know, it started off with, with emotionally, with mugs and mailing lists. And they were very lively mugs, and they were very lively mailing lists. Uh, you don't necessarily get the idea from the uh, uh, reading the, the actual RFCs that resulted from there, but there's a lot of argument. Um, but even the RFCs themselves make an emotional statement. And I will inflict them on you now.
too low. Okay, sorry. Now, um, here's a lovely little command. I'm going to, this was actually a lightning talk in uh, Portland. Uh, I'm going to uh, just scroll these uh, uh, past in five minutes. Um, <laughs> Notice you can you can sleep a fractionally in, in Perl six. I really don't have to say much here. It's it's really about uh, shock and awe. Um, I thought I might just read these to you, but that would have taken ten minutes. Uh, unfortunately, you can read faster than I can talk. I don't want you to think about this technically. I want you to think about it emotionally. After the mugs, we were expecting maybe 20 RFCs. We were expecting some good problem statements. Um, we were expecting coherent solutions to those problem statements. Um, instead, we got this. 361 cries for help. Uh, 361 reasons to hate Perl. 361 reasons for Perl programmers to wander off with another lover. Where, oh where are you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over and thought I found true love. You met another and you was gone. And uh, so please try, try to feel the pathos here. Um, People seem to think that Perl started becoming less popular recently. Uh, this is all from 11 years ago. These are all the cries of her disappointed lovers, the disappointed lovers of the last millennium. An amazing number of these RFCs said, Perl is fine the way it is, so we don't have to change anything by default. We just need to have one new pragma to fix this one little teeny fundamental flaw. Uh, just one more pragma. But I'm not asking you to change, dear. I love you just the way you are. Pearl OO should not be fundamentally changed. Eliminate <laughs> an equal tilde. Case ignoring. Split scalars. Arrays. Add reshape. Oh, 155. Remove math and trig. 161. Let's make Perl more like small talk. Yeah. 171. No, let's make Perl more like C++. Yeah. 184. No, make it more like Lisp. Superpositions? Is this some kind of a joke from Damien? <laughs> now we have junctions. Uh, oh, yeah, 243. No uppercase names! No shouting. 246. Uncontroversial enhancements, though with a controversial spelling. 247. Let's make it more like C. 260. Give us more modules. <laughs> yeah. Not a board. More arrays. Internal representations. Yeah. And well, well, open ended slices. Oh, yeah. 287. I'd like Pearl to persist. Yeah, I'd like for it to persist too. Yeah. Regex. 
Oh, honey, you've got your hooks into me. Yeah. Abstract internals. Extend auto load. Symbols, symbols everywhere. Use syntax. <laughs> 336, let's make it more like Java. 342, no, more like Pascal. No, 343, new Perl mascot. Yeah, I like that. 346, more license wars. 352, let's make it more like C sharp. And 359 pretty much sums it up. Improvement needed.
what the scene really looks like is this. And probably the, uh, the, 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 the bus and the, the, the signals, the traffic lights, the, the train station, these are probably actually much more important than that building in terms of actual modernity. Um, even the wires. How many of you even saw the wires? When I first put this up, you probably just said, oh, wires, tune it out. But there's wires everywhere, that's modern. Milda gets wires. See Milda? Um, the bus gets wires. What was the wires? Um, it's almost an art form here, you know, it's, it's great, very graceful curves. Um, I love wires. I'm strange. But uh, here at Riga, there's a lot of good mixed with the bad, especially in, in architecture. Uh, we've seen some of that. And, you know, there's this whole idea that um, uh, the future is good and the past is bad, but, uh, you know, which future? Um, in Disneyland, when they first built it in the 1950s, they built Tomorrowland. And they kept trying to update it. Uh, <coughs> as Tomorrow kept changing. Uh, it's only now that we got speakerphones. They were advertising speakerphones in the 60s. Oh, you'll have them next year. <laughs> My speakerphones. Uh, picture phones. I'm sorry, picture phones. Um, so eventually they, they gave up and said, okay, Tomorrowland is really about the vision. You know, it's like the science fiction writers of the 1950s, their idea of what the future was going to be like. So it's now the future of the past. Uh, and what we live now is, is, you know, we think about the future, but we're sort of thinking of ourselves as the past of the future. We're thinking about, you know, global warming and whether our, our children are going to drown and all that sort of thing. Um, so, do we trust the future? Do we trust the past? This is sort of the, the modern versus romantic uh, divide. You know, we have these multiple futures. Uh, and, you know, we have the, the multi-worlds multi uh, quantum uh, interpretation that, you know, every time you make a decision, the world splits into two, and that's, uh, you know, why we talk about quantum superpositions. But, you know, there's also multiple pasts. Um, you know, I think if the, if the world is splitting, it's also probably converging. Um, so, again, this divide of romantic and modern, or, or postmodern, if you will, um, it's about analysis versus synthesis, uh, and divergence versus convergence in a, in, a, in a fundamental way. So, we have these two definitions of modern. There's the modern that is the modern period, modernist. That's pre-postmodern, obviously. And there's the, you know, cool new things. That's sort of post-postmodern. But Pearl has always been mostly synthetic and less analytical. Um, it's more like Mahler, less like Mozart. I love Mahler. Mozart's okay, but I'm really tired of writing Klein and Ock music. Uh, more like Tolkien, less like Hemingway. Uh, Tolkien loved to put everything in, you know, he took all sorts of historical uh, threads and put them into a story. Um, so Pearl tends to trust its multiple pasts, all the cultures it draws features from. And, you know, there's more than one way to do it, it's really a kind of romantic notion. You know, and Python, in contrast, sort of defines itself as not having more than one way to do it. So it's sort of anti-romantic. Pearl, because it's, it's got some classical uh, computer language in it, it uh, we do have some of that. But can we integrate it better? Can we actually pull all this together and solve some of these uh, problems that were pointed out in the RFCs? I mean, you look at those RFCs and you say, well, those, that's Pearl Six's problem. No. These are problems that people pointed out in Pearl Five. At least they were problems in the year 2000. <coughs> so both Pearl Five and Pearl Six must address these problems, but they must address them differently. Um, you know, Pearl Five must evolve. It has a lot of users, it's very useful, I use it every day, um, I love it, um, it's got its endearing qualities, um, but uh, Pearl 6 to develop must, must do it by an evolutionary path. Pearl 6, by definition, 
we said it's going to be a revolution. Well, maybe it's not a red revolution, it's more like a, a green revolution. Um, but, you know, Pearl 6, looking at those RFCs, was our best guess at what Pearl 5 would evolve into if we had 50 more years to do continuous evolution. Um, you know, obviously we'd be wrong about that. Sometimes you just can't get there from here. So, there are ways in which Pearl 6 is a different language, and many ways in which it's fundamentally the same underneath. So, uh, it's, it's, it's both the same and a different language. We like to say they are sister languages. But that's the big bet. We look at these, these ideas in Pearl 6 and say, we can do some of them now. Um, but the difference in, in approach, um, okay, uh, let me go. Okay, here's, here's an, an example. I can move this. Yeah. Let me move. This is the, uh, the Rosetta Code site. I, I pointed out in talks before, and uh, I'm sure it will be pointed out again. Uh, there, there are many different languages on, on Rosetta Code. It's, it's about how you do the same algorithm in many different languages. There are hundreds of different languages that are documented here. Uh, Perl is, is one of them. It, it has 400 and some different examples of how you do things in Perl. And you can compare them how, how it does it in other languages. And, you know, often Perl comes off looking very much better than, than other languages. Uh, you know, Perl, there are lots of things we like about Perl. Uh, it's very succinct. You don't have to say a lot, you know, you don't have to say class this, method this, just to, to say hello world. Uh, or goodbye world in this case. Uh, that sounds kind of ominous. But, um, okay, so classic, classic Perl, you print goodbye world, and, and there's that new line on that. There, out there on the end, that pesky new line, which, uh, you know, uh, Perl 6 here, down at the bottom, uh, said, you know, it's, it's kind of a stupid little thing, but if they have a different command that adds on the, the new line, we're probably using quite a bit, and that's turned out to be the case. And that is a, a very, was a very easy feature for Perl 5 to borrow back from Perl 6. So Perl, Perl, uh, Perl 5 now has uh, a a say command too. But you see the difference right here. Uh, with Perl 6, we need to say, that's what Perl 6 is. It starts out that way. We don't have to worry about backward compatibility. Uh, in Perl 5, we've got this little prompt so that we, you know, somebody might be fine to say routine, oh horrors. So we have to say use feature say or use 5.010, which is, in fact, another thing that is going obsolete. Probably you ought to say use Perl uh, v5.10 because this is going to become obsolete once you get up to Perl 5.999. <laughs> Where do you go from there? Um, yeah. <coughs> there, there are many other um, there are many other examples out here of. of uh, reasons why you might, you know, why, why people love Perl. I, I really don't have to tell you why you like Perl. Uh, most of you already know. Um, but uh, uh, Rosetta Code itself, oh, this is not Roman Catholicism. If we say, if we say RC, we mean Rosetta Code. Um, uh, it, it's it's postmodern. Um, it's comparing all these different languages and not making a judgment. You decide for yourself which, which languages you like, which ones you don't like. Um, I like both Perl and Perl 6. Uh, Perl actually has more examples on Rosetta Code than, than uh, Perl 6 does, but we're catching up. Uh, I think uh, last count, uh, Perl 6 has 370 
running examples of poker. <laughs> so uh, curl six is very much real. It's, it's slow, but it's getting faster, and some of our guys will talk about it this week. Uh, but, you know, curl uh, itself is, is uh, multi-paradigmatic. Uh, there are many different ways of, uh, of approaching problems, functional programming, object-oriented. Um, it's like, you know, there's, there's many different ways to think about the world. There, there, if you think about uh, uh, Mother Nature, um, many of these philosophies are, are how you deal with nature. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the moderns and the classicists, they, they like to oversimplify nature and make a few simple rules. The romantics, you know, it's, 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 it's fancy. So, you know, maybe, maybe you have trees and they, they're, they're wild trees, or maybe you try to tame them. This is sort of a modern idea of how trees should be. But there's, again, this divide between the romantic and the, and the, the modern. Do we, do we try to control nature, or are we sort of, you know, uh, in awe of, of, of all the complexity there, and just try to uh, tap into that? So uh, the, uh, you can also view it as sort of a, uh, you know, a Platonic versus an Aristotelian view of, of reality. And the Platonic is about the, the simple ideas that the, you know, the equations that underlie uh, what how you think ideas. The uh, Romantic and the, and the Broke they're like just dealing with what's out there already. The, the, the romantic brick walls, you know, uh, just look at them and deal with it. Enjoy those. Um, and Aristotle was all, you know, very down to earth that way. Top down things tend to be hierarchical and therefore uh, kind of a, a classical idea. Uh, when you start doing bottom up things, that's more of a baroque uh, romantic idea. <coughs> You know, Plato likes immutable things. Uh, so, um, and, and Aristotle, not so much. So, you know, if you want to do functional programming, you're thinking more like a, a modern or a classicist. If you're doing object-oriented stuff, you're thinking more like a, a postmodern or romantic of some sort. Um, you know, all these objects are out there, they're kind of equal and they interact. And it's very fancy, that's just the way nature works. But you know, this this side of postmodern is postmodern is newer than modern. So um, in some sense, object orientation is, is more modern than functional programming. Go figure. But um, there are other kinds of object oriented programming. You know, prototype based OO is uh, is it's all real objects. Your parent object is is another real object that you uh, inherit from. Um, instead of having classes, so that's that's very quite Aristotelian. Class-based objects, um, well, is that more Platonic? Uh, is it still, still still that word I can't even pronounce, um, or is it just confused, like my tongue? Um, in modern Perl now, we have this idea of roles versus classes, and we split these these ideas of objects so that we can take the platonic stuff and shove it into roles, and the Aristotelian stuff and stick it into classes. And so we get both loose roles and Perl 6 roles. And in fact, it was uh, at a Yaxi uh, some years ago up in Toronto, we had a hackathon before it, where uh, Stephen and I and Audrey, and we, we hashed a lot of this stuff out about how a meta-object protocol should work and separate these things out. This is actually an idea borrowed from Smalltalk. But, you know, that, that's, the roles are kind of a modern idea because they're about abstraction, about generic uh, code. And controlling your, your objects with a meta-object protocol, as in both Moose and, and Perl 6, well, that, that's a modern idea. It, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's the, the, uh, the platonic <laughs> ideals of, what you're, of what's controlling your ideas. Encapsulation, that's a hierarchical idea, so it's, it's a modern idea. What about meta-object protocols that support multiple representations? 
Well, you know, that's kind of pluralistic, so I, I call it postmodern, or I call it, well, or I call it whatever. Um, but we'd like to get to the point where, you know, using modern ideas and romantic ideas is okay, because that's really what, where we're going with this uh, postmodern idea. I read the, uh, the, the uh, uh, description of the uh, modern Perl uh, introduction tutorial this week, and one of the things it talks about besides Moose is uh, inversion of control and dependency injection. Uh, you know, and that, that's how you decouple uh, objects and, and take them out of a hierarchy. That sounds kind of postmodern to me. You know, delegation and the law of Demet Demeter. Um, it, it's, it's very kind of deconstructive, in a sense, uh, of, of hierarchy. You know, it's, it's, it's not, you know, postmodernism is about taking the man down. Uh, and those concepts are about sort of taking the object down, you know, not privileging any one object. So it's a, a postmodern idea. Uh, that's okay. It, it can, you can call it modern pro. Uh, what I'd really like to, to sum up though is that both Perl 5 and Perl 6 are trying with this idea of, of modern Perl to converge on a set of sensible defaults. You know, um, we're not trying to go and make Perl like any other language. Uh, but, you know, if, if a little bit of the, the Pythonic notion of having a, an obvious way to do it sneaks in, that's okay. Uh, we don't want to go as far as saying there's only one way to do it, which you know, sometimes the Python people say. But um, we want to be able to say, here's the best way to do it, um, in our opinion, you know, in, in Perl 5 and Perl 6. Now, and we have to add that in our opinion business because there may actually be several best ways to do it. Um, and, uh, you know, again, coming back to the history of, of uh, Latvia, uh, you know, the 20th century moderns didn't always agree <laughs> whether uh, uh, capitalism or communism was more modern. Uh, so, it's not always easy. Um, we have, uh, we live in interesting times. Everyone lives in interesting times. And, you know, we have where we are and we have where we'd like to get to. And, you know, to take out the old metaphor of the tunnel, um, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And um, so, you know, we, we need to paddle as hard as we can to get to the other side of that tunnel. Assuming it has water in it. Um, <laughs> Anyway, now that I put y'all to sleep, um, I'd just like to finish up by uh, uh, pointing out some what you might call uh, modern Perl 6 features. This is a very new stuff. Um, and if I can, will this work? Yeah, I think this will work. I'll show you how to look at the uh, very recent, uh, here, here is the Perl 6 web page, and under compilers, <coughs> we have a feature comparison matrix. This is sort of a digestion of, you know, when we had the 361 RFCs, uh, they were a complete mess, and we, then we did a design for Perl 6 based on that. We keep refining that design as, um, as we go forward. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Maurice could not be here this uh, 
this leaf. But uh, he came up with the idea of doing this uh, graph. And so it's, it's a very uh, kind of coarse grain graph here. But uh, it compares several of the um, several of the uh, Rakuto implementations. Here's our current Rakuto implementation. Uh, and this is Rakuto Nam, which is a branch we we <laughs> Jonathan and Patrick and others have I, 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 I haven't done this. This is them. Um, have been working on for uh, uh, several months now. Every time they refactor Perl 6, they get better at rewriting it. Uh, so uh, uh, now it's taking just a couple months. Next time, you know, pretty soon they'll be able to rewrite the whole thing in a few minutes. Uh, and Niecha is a, uh, a different implementation. We, we have multiple implementations, it's one of the ideas. Uh, it's, instead of being on top of Parrot, it's actually written in .NET. And so it runs on the CLR or Mono. Uh, and uh, so here's a high level idea of, of various uh, features that uh, were designed on the basis of those RFCs. So I just scroll down here and it, it will give you sort of a, a notion of uh, how far we've come and, and what's left to do before we can declare Christmas. Um, but it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. Uh, another th interesting thing about this is, is that we have links to the various places in the specs and various code samples on Rosetta code and other places. So, uh, green means that the, the feature is fully implemented. Uh, you see some things here that snuck back into Perl 5, like state variables. So, and others of these things may, may uh, be good things to borrow back to. Uh, red means not implemented yet. Yellow means it's partially implemented. Um, okay, all this stuff about classes and roles, it'll look very moose like to some of you. Some of these things have uh, have footnotes saying why they're only partially implemented. Uh, you see that Niecha uh, uh, is ahead in some areas, and uh, Rakuto is ahead in other areas. Nam uh, is ahead in some areas, like uh, here. Nam is ahead of <coughs> classic Rakuto, and it's faster. Uh, we don't have a feature for that, for faster. Uh, I'm working on that all the time. Uh, so, yeah. I love rats. Those are rationals. Uh, integers are, are big by, by default. And there's trig. Yes, we kept trig. Make, what? Native operations, uh, well, we have native types that we're starting to get in there, but uh, we don't quite have it. Pretty soon we'll have native native storage, and then we'll be able to write very optimizable um, Perl 6 code. <coughs> multiple dispatch is, is one of those fundamental design leaps of Perl 6 probably is not going to be viral or pull back into Perl 5 anytime soon. You've got a smart match operator in Perl 5, though it's a little problematic because you don't have types. Um, junctions, you can get flip-flop, you got flip-flops, sort of thing. Uh, meta operators is another thing that I, I think will be pretty easy to borrow back into Perl 5. Induction operators. You know about begin, check, init, and end. Perl 6 has a few more of those. We call those phasers now. So we can say we're firing off a phaser. Okay. <coughs> and all the footnotes. Lovely footnotes. Okay, well that, that gives an idea of what the, the Perl 6 
design team has decided modern curl means. Um, so, uh, many of the ideas that are here are shared with, with, uh, with things you'll, you'll see in uh, the Perl 5 ideas of modern Perl. Um, so, just to sum up, uh, since my time is about gone, um, Riga is a beautiful town. It uh, is multicultural in many beautiful ways. There, it is multicultural in many painful ways. Uh, but, you know, half, half, about half of Latvia is Latvians and about half of it is Russians. Uh, and, you know, they're learning to get along. <laughs> it's not easy. I, and I wish them the best of luck. Um, we can also get along, even though that, uh, you know, some, some of us are off with our head in the clouds working on Perl 6, and some people are actually getting useful work done with Perl 5. Um, you know, we're still one community, and uh, we can converge. We don't have to diverge. So, um, have a great deal of fun at the conference this, this year. Um, uh, get to know some new people. Uh, if you haven't been to one of these before, go to the, the talk on uh, you know, how to get the most out of the app scene. Uh, just really enjoy yourselves and enjoy each other. And uh, thank you for letting me uh, come up and put you to sleep.